All right, problem seven on problem set 22. Here we're going to do a Claisen condensation reaction, which is an intramolecular Claisen condensation, also known as the Dieckmann condensation. When you first look at this, this might look a little intimidating, but let's check this out. We've got a base. We know that we have these alpha protons, alpha to this carbonyl of these esters that are acidic. We can make enolates. Let's figure out if we can make a ring, how do you even start with that? What you want to do is you want to start at the alpha carbon, alpha to the carbonyl, and you want to start with the number one. And we're just going to count until we get to the other carbon. I'm sorry, count till we get to the other carbonyl. Because that's where we know an enolate can attack. An enolate can attack another carbonyl. Here I have five. Five is a great number. Five and six are very common for these condensation reactions um, to cyclize and form our product. So now that we know that we can form a five-membered ring, what we're going to do is we're going to start our mechanism. Here I've got OET minus. We're going to deprotonate alpha to the carbonyl. We're going to push the electrons here, and then we're going to make our enolate. I'm going to show you a little trick as you get ready to do the cyclization. We've already done a lot of the, we've already done the work for the uh, drawing what size of a ring we're going to do. We're going to push this down like we talked about. We're going to use the enolate and sp specifically that carbon here, alpha to the carbonyl. We're going to um, attack and kick this up. We've already decided based on our counting that this is going to make a five-membered ring. So what I suggest doing is going ahead and drawing your five-membered ring. Now what we're going to do, oh, I drew that too close. Where did my eraser go? There we go. There we go. What we're going to do is we're going to count um, the carbons here on this five-membered ring. So it doesn't really matter where you start. We know that we've got a <laughs> it might be useful if you count it right. <laughs> oh my, I need more coffee. So um, what we're going to do here, carbon one, we know has an ester. So let's go ahead and draw that in. I'm not worried about stereochemistry, not quite yet. On carbon five, we know we attacked it. That means we have an O minus, and then we also have this OET. Under basic conditions, for the next step, we know that OET can act as a good leaving group. We're under strongly basic conditions. That means that I can make that group leave. And here I have my final product. However, one thing to note is that this hydrogen here on this compound is actually more acidic than even the starting material. Under strongly basic conditions, this reaction and this mechanism doesn't stop here. We are under basic conditions. We're going to deprotonate this. Now you might ask, you're like, but we just drew the product. I, I was watching the lectures. I know that that was the product. That might be the case, but this is actually the correct mechanism. And this is why we need this workup step, especially for this reaction. Here, we're going to go ahead and do our workup step. We've got H3O plus. And this is, um, it's not a harsh condition. We don't need much to, to uh, reprotonate this. Here, I'm going to use the enolate that we have. I'm going to protonate it. And then now I have my final product. I always like to wait till the end to look at the stereochemistry of what's going on. So let's look into this. We know that enolates, um, here are planar structures. That, that means that this uh, enolate could attack the carbonyl either on the front side or the back side. Now, when we did the attack, when we come down here, that means that this stereocenter could be either R or S. Tablets doing something weird. There we go. Oops. Um, and so in that case, that carbon can be either R or S. Another thing, though, is we do remove the stereo center here. It is now planar here. During the protonation step, again, this can be either R or S. 
So in the product, what you're going to need to do on the exam is you're going to need to draw both of them. You could denote one being chiral and then say that it is racemic, and that is okay too. By drawing this, writing racemic underneath, or you could draw both. I prefer to draw both, but either would be accepted and fine. And there you have it. You have your uh, Dieckmann condensation reaction and the mechanism for it.